Scalp cleanse. Basically, darling, I want those maggots out of your hair. Lena hovered over the glass table, both hands flat on its surface. She stared into her daughter's eyes, searching for the child she remembered raising, the one before the piercings, metal implants, and cobalt hair dye. Samantha stared back unblinkingly, her irises dark and red. Well, Mom, I respectfully disagree. It's an acceptable fashion trend, and I intend to follow it. Lena's hand smacked the glass surface harder than she intended. The impact sent vibrations across the water jug and peanuts. Well, I don't think it's acceptable to turn my house into a fly-ridden dumpster. I think it's finally time for you to grow up. The counselor sitting between them sipped from her glass. Now, Miss Hawcroft, your daughter has already explained that her accessories will not fly about your home. They'll only follow me, Samantha said. My scent. Your daughter is entitled to embrace her own personage however she wishes. Don't you think you could make some compromises to accept her appearance? Lena, who had tried to be the progressive kind of parent who would pay for this sort of counseling session, now realized her mistake. The experts promoting the emotional health of single-parent families seem to be under the ever-expanding misconception that youth should be pardoned for anything and everything. Lena had to draw a line. Look, I don't care what clothes Samantha wears, what tattoos she's got, or even what feed raves she goes to. Lena leaned on the table again. I think I'm being very reasonable. The only compromise I want as a parent, as a cohabitant, is no flies in my daughter's hair. They're called faunas, Mom. Miss Hawcroft. The counselor set down her drink. Faunas are a cosmetic accessory. They're a sterile, non-communicable fashion trend used across all age groups. Surely you saw our secretary with butterflies across her headband. Lena rolled her eyes. Yes. I have a friend with honeybees that follow her wherever she goes. There are children who opt for ladybugs. Not to sound like a spokesperson, but I think faunas are a healthy way to maintain our ties to nature here in the upper cities. Lena gazed at her reflection in the table. She could see the disgust in her own eyes. Can I at least request that Samantha switches to something more presentable? I don't want house guests to see hairy green horseflies filtering through our flat. They'll think something's dead. Samantha simply turned to the counselor who seemed unbothered by this revelation. This is not a question of what animals you find repulsive, the counselor said. It is a matter of you accepting your daughter. I think people are very tolerant of any variety of fauna. Lena stared blankly at the woman's plucked eyebrows. She was such a paradox. How could such a reticent, normal-looking professional have no reservations about her vampire child? Couldn't she see that Sam needed some pushback? Some degree of adjustment for the real world? Do you know anything about the social scenes or other pressures that your daughter might be under? The counselor asked. No. Lena leaned back into her chair. Clearly I don't. There was a pause where the counselor made direct eye contact with Lena, as if imparting a counsel too profound for simple words. If I may be blunt, Miss Hawcroft, this all stems from a lack of interest in your daughter. Your apathy, at least up until this appointment, has driven her to make the decision she has. Samantha sat up and brushed her bangs. Psychologically speaking, the gothic and dark subcultures of feed raves are born from a lack of attention. They're a rebellion. If you want Samantha to grow up, you need to start by opening a channel of communication, one based on support for her interests. Lena took a moment to exhale. She looked at Samantha's bangs and imagined a fat fly crawling across them. So you say the bottom line is, she keeps the bugs. No, the bottom line is, spend more time together. That is the compromise you must both make. After an awkward shuttle back to their apartment, Lena admitted that a better connection with Sam would be a solution for many of their disputes. Anything was better than the constant silence they exchanged, the dead glances with no communication. They needed to start bonding together, however incrementally. Although Lena had no desire to experience the new anarchic state of music firsthand, she was starting to suspect that if she joined Sam at a feed rave, it could be the first step towards something. A conversation, a hello, anything. If I have to do it, God help me, I will, Lena thought. I'll go to a feed rave. Later that night, Lena approached the band posters that hung on her daughter's door. She knocked on the face of a crimson-eyed vocalist. The poster proclaimed that his band was all dead, all gone. So, what do you think, Sammy? Can I join you tonight? I think that counselor did have a point. 
There was a pause in which the door remained closed. Very slowly the knob turned, revealing a tired-looking Samantha with wet, soapy hair. She wiped foam from under her red eyes. A few piercings had been temporarily removed, leaving empty holes. It's all right, Mom. It's fine. What did you do? I rinsed my hair. I'm not getting the faunas. Lena instinctually lifted her hands, wanting to inspect her daughter's head. But she resisted, forcing her palms back down. So, what made you change your... Just please don't come to any of my rave stuff, okay? That's all I ask. Her daughter gazed imploringly, seeking some kind of acceptance. Lena was unsure if this counted as a victory or loss. Would the counselor see this as progress? Okay. Well, just be home before morning. I'll try. The door closed and Lena was left standing alone again. She tried briefly, as she often did, to decipher the collage on Samantha's door. The post-apocalyptic band names, the photos of feed cables stretched into guitarists. Was this the cause of Samantha's acting out? Or just an expression of it? In Lena's observations of the posters, she came across a cadaverous singer with transparent skin, his organs fully on display. Above his head hovered a crown of thousands of gnats, fanning outward like a black flame. It must have been the look Samantha was going for. Lena inspected the singer's eyes and wondered what pigment they had been before he dyed them so dark and red. Did his mother know he looked like this? Had she cared to stop him? Had she tried?